This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, back in 2017, I attended my first convention. It was Horror Rama 2017. I was invited by Lisa Langwa to a sister at her table. And I met a slew of wonderful, interesting people, including my guest today, who is joining me, and of course, uh, among other things, in celebration of the 40th anniversary of the Road Warrior. Yes, we have Wes himself. Vernon Wells, welcome. Thank you, Greg. I'm happy to be here. Happy to see you here. And... Uh, I grabbed this while I, <laughs> this is, you signed this for me. <laughs> says, Greg, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> That's the truth, my friend. Now, tell me, when are you going to bring that haircut back? <laughs> uh, let me think about that. Never. <laughs> you don't think that's a good look for you? <laughs> yeah, it was 40 years ago, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I still have this. I did a little unveiling um, video on it during COVID when I uh, had no station access and didn't have Zoom at the time. And so I got to show this off. But uh, yeah, I, it was a pleasure and an honor to meet you. And had it not been for Lisa Langwa, I would probably have lived all my life here in New Brunswick, Canada with no travel because I had no desire to travel. Mm -hmm. But Lisa made the offer and I wasn't going to turn her down. <laughs> no, that, that was a good offer. Mm hmm. And she and I are still in touch. Um, we even uh, sent each other Christmas gifts uh, last year. So she sent my cat a Santa hat and my cat was not liking it. <laughs> but uh, Lisa and I are very much in touch and um, I owe her a lot for, because I've been to Horror Rama uh, the two following years, last year, obviously, no, but but I'm looking forward to doing Frightmare in the Falls this fall and love the conventions. So uh, you must be popular at those because I know you have, I think you're going to be at Chiller this fall, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be at Chiller uh, at the end of October. Wow. I heard, I've never been to Chiller, but I heard it's a big one. It's a big one, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm going with a good, good friend of mine. She actually uh, arranged for me to go do it, uh, Marta Kane. Mm -hmm. She was the eldest daughter in the original Lost in Space. Okay. And uh, she lives next door to me, which is uh, quite good. Um, and she asked me if I wanted to go and then contacted uh, the boy, and he said, of course love to have him so i'll be going and doing that which um i think will be a lot of fun wow well you know what like i said uh i got a couple of pictures with you i took one of you and lisa together too and uh it was fun just sitting at that table with her and you were just a, just right next to us there across the way there and uh and uh grilling you every once in a while about whether Furiosa was going to come for you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what do you think 40 years Road Warrior and often hailed between that and Fury Road, Fury Road really got hailed, but uh, this was hailed the best of the three originals. What do you think 40 years later? Um, I, I think that the film itself is more uh, pertinent today in uh -huh. the situations we're in in the world that we live in than it was when it was made 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, where it was actually set in 2021, which is this year. <laughs> well, Blade Runner got it wrong, and I'm pretty sure Back to the Future 2 is going to get it wrong, too. <laughs> I don't think we'll have flying hoverboards by 2025. <laughs> uh, probably not, no. But, uh, yeah, so, um, 
back then we had no idea it would ever become what it was or would ever be so relevant but as the years have ticked on it's just become more and more relevant it's a, it's the situation we find ourselves in whether we like it or not we're we're moving closer and closer to that kind of uh society you know and it's it's scary yeah well you know love this film and it's uh often hailed as the best of the the bunch i saw thunderdome at the drive-in when i was young and i saw fury road when it came out in the theaters so i never got to see this on the big screen i would like to though but i love the fact that fury road its structure is very similar to road warrior yep yep uh, yeah um george went back to the basics of what what the the, the series was about mm -hmm. and, um that is that it's a road movie i mean pure and simple it's a, it's good versus evil and it's a road movie and you know good triumphs in the end through whatever it has to go through and uh I think that's what made them all so successful is that, you know, you can cheer for the good guy or you can cheer for the bad guy. It doesn't matter. Um, but eventually um, the good will prevail. Mm -hmm. You still, uh, when's the last time you saw Mel Gibson? Um, quite a few years ago. I actually saw him at a screening of um, his, the film he directed. Um, gosh, the name of it escapes me. It was the one set in South America with the um, the Indians. Um, I know which one you're talking about, um, and I can't think of the name of it. It starts with A, I know that. Yeah, isn't this wonderful? I can't even think of the name of it. Apocalyptic or something like that. But Apocalyptic. Yeah. For me, I love The Passion of the Christ, and I loved Hacksaw Ridge. I, I think he was those were both wonderful movies that he did, you know, but, uh, yeah, you worked with him in this, you got to fight with Schwarzenegger and, uh, commando. You, <laughs> you, you're a, you're a wonderful, wonderful guy, but you play a lot of villains. Do, do you enjoy playing villains? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I enjoy acting. It's very simple, mm -hmm. but villains, um, I, th I think are a lot of fun simply because villains really don't have any any boundaries you know you it, as a villain you can do anything you know you can you can shoot grandma and kick her dog and everybody cheers you know it's a villain if you're the good guy and you do something like that oh my god you know the whole world has ended mm -hmm. so you're very, very aware that that uh, when you do uh change over which i've done in the last few years and most of the films i do now are playing the uh more the 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 good guy than the bad guy you've got to be aware that you can't do the things that you did when you're a villain you know it, it doesn't go down people expect their heroes to be heroes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so doing the villain is is kind of fun and also when you play a villain it's not who you are you know you're making up a character you're mm -hmm. devising a character and you're creating that character and you're playing it when you're the good guy a hell of a lot of who you are goes into the character you're portraying because that's the obvious choice is who you are so you tend to with me it's like a, it scares me a little because i'm putting a lot of who i am out there on the screen whereas a villain um uh, you know it's got nothing to do with me it's a character i've created but as the uh the good guy you tend to sometimes reveal a lot of who you are and how you think and how you work so i prefer being a villain sometimes <laughs> well i think your role in uh road warrior was so influential you kind of got to reprise it in this a little bit you and michael berryman both <laughs> riding in there you as your road warrior and him as his hills have eyes <laughs> I, I think that was a lot of fun doing that. It took a while actually to convince me to do it because I really didn't want to go back and have my head shaved and do the whole thing um, uh, having done it. Um, but then, of course, once I knew who the director was and the cast and things like that, I went, oh, well, what the hell? I'm being taken to America. I might as well go do it. 
And uh, so I came over and did it. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, I enjoyed it a lot. And it turned out to be a, a good movie. It's Mem still today. Yeah. Like <laughs> Memories of John Hughes. Oh, yes. M wonderful man. Wonderful man to work with. Um, and in that film, I mean, if you think about it, we had uh, Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. was it. A, a lot of people who went on to become much, much bigger actors than that film. So it was kind of a launching pad for quite a few actors, which was uh, another exciting thing about it that, that you had to enjoy. I remember Judy Aronson and Suzanne Snyder. <laughs> and both of them are very good friends. Uh, I went to Judy's birthday two years ago. And um they're they're just sweet sweet people beautiful everybody from that cast actually is um really really nice people very down to earth and uh we're actually having there's a big reunion um convention next february 22nd 3rd and 4th i believe if i'm not wrong um uh over in in, in uh texas mm-hmm um, which I'll be attending, and so will Judy and the rest of them, and quite a few of us from the cast will be attending it, which is kind of cool. And they're trying to work out a um, a couple of conventions in England because they're always trying to get the cast together. Because in Europe, the film is still a hot ticket. So you know, who knows? It's a little bit yeah. like Road Warrior. Every time I turn a corner, somebody wants to see me in the costume. <laughs> You mean you don't uh, you allow this costume to double as your pajamas? No, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I actually do wear it for um, photo sessions at some of the big conventions I go, because I do have it. I have the original costume and uh, all the stuff to make a mohawk and the whole thing. Um, and occasionally, uh, if it's a big convention and they want me to, I will... Uh, drag it along but it's so heavy and so it takes up so much space i mean it's like god damn i'm paying for carrying this this thing all around the states and uh it's like hmm wonder if i could cut it in half and make it smaller I don't know maybe it wouldn't work you ever put it on and go to mel gibson's place for halloween trick or treating? <laughs> um i'm still here so i guess no <laughs> well i've never had the pleasure of having suzanne or judy on here um i'd love to get them at some point but uh i know ted white spoke very highly of judy aronson and uh because he worked with her and i've had him on here a couple times but uh yeah i uh actually it's funny um i just occurred to me Michael Berryman is going to be at Frightmare in the Falls which I'm going to this October so uh so I'm going to see him he hasn't done the mohawk yet though he's he's got the bald head but no mohawk yet nope. <laughs> anyway because you were such a wonderful guy to meet and uh yeah, I came on my show uh, back in 2018 when I was approached to be a co-producer on The Social Distance by the director who's, uh, I have a hard time pronouncing his name. Brian. <laughs> you, know you just call him Brian? <laughs> I interviewed him back in March and he's very gracious and he gets it, you know, he's got one of those names, but uh Anyway, when I found out you were in this, I got on as a co-producer, and my name is actually on this uh, Blu-ray, so uh, I okay. got one of, yeah, I ordered one of these, and uh, I popped it in, and I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was quite impressed. This was really, really good. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a great little movie. I mean, for the way it was done, mm -hmm. uh, everyone in that cast shot their own part in their own home uh, through Zoom. Mm -hmm. Exactly as it would have been if you were actually doing a meeting like we are now. Mm -hmm. um, and it was done that way. And I thought it was brilliantly put together. And, and the role that I had was just so much fun. I had a ball. 
You um, played the old man. <laughs> yep. That's what they called you. <laughs> yep. Despite, yeah. despite you being 39 years old, how can that be? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> But I watched this. I, I've uh, interviewed the director, Rob Mahoney, who's uh, um, an executive producer on this I've had on here, and Noelle Berger, and I think you're number four from this movie. So yeah. it's got it's gotten some legs on here, but uh, I was quite impressed because I wasn't sure what I was going to think of this, you know? Like... Yeah. Um, where everybody's on the screen, but I love the idea that everybody on there had a different personality. They all yep. stole their moments. And well, uh, we still have to find out what I'm actually doing in the ice. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Brian about that and he said, yeah, that's coming. Don't worry. Oh. So, but I also did his next film, which was Electric Man. Mm-hmm. I have a, a great little part in that, me and Reb carrying on like a pair of dumb asses. Um, and it was just really, really nice and really just very pleasantly fun to do. And uh, he's a joy to work with and um, Brian's a joy to work with. So I had, and we actually shot it at my house looking out over the beach, uh, which was kind of fun too. He approached me for Electric Man, but uh, here's the thing with me is, and I wanted to do it. The problem is, is financially, my savings took a hit this year because my car stalled going down a busy street and I had to pull into a parking lot and couldn't get that fixed. So I had to get a new car and I had to get a CPAP machine so I wouldn't die in my sleep. <laughs> Because I went from moderate to extreme sleep apnea, so uh, I my money ended up going towards some other situations. But um, so uh, I ended up having to pass on Electric Man. I didn't want to, but but um, I know you're in it, and Tom Sizemore and Eric Roberts, who I'm actually in a movie with by James Balsamo, because. Um, James just told me to what to do, shoot my own scenes on my phone, send it to him. And Eric is watching me on his television, which is kind of amusing. <laughs> Technology allows me to be in a scene with Eric Roberts. And I didn't even have to leave my own town. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. But um yeah, the the Electric Man looks like it's a, a good movie. Have you seen it yet? I haven't seen it. No, I haven't even seen what I did in it. I just had Brian tell me he loved it. He thought it was hysterical. They had a screening of it um a couple of months ago, but unfortunately I was filming at the time, so I couldn't uh, get to it. So um I guess when he can, he's gonna send me a copy of it so I can have a look at it. Mm-hmm. Well, talk about your experience doing uh, social distance and playing this character. What was your first impression when you were just had this brought to you about doing a movie in this style? Well, I already knew Brian because I'd, I'd worked with him on a couple of other projects. Mm -hmm. well, I, I was already uh, in, into who he was and what he was doing. Um, when he approached me, I thought it would be interesting because I couldn't see how it would work. I, I was thinking, hmm, this is either going to be really good or really bad. There's no kind of middle ground on this. Um, and uh, I was interested in, in being involved simply because it was different. And the character um, I loved because you don't know really what he is and who he is and why he is all the way through it. I mean, he's ambiguous. You don't know. You just know that he is this guy that has his fingers in a lot of pies and he's definitely up to something, but we have no clue what it is. And uh, that's why I, like, I thought this would be fun to do and pull it off and uh, get people to get involved with him, which I managed to do. I won a, a Best Actor Award for it. So I guess somebody thought I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. 
Well, what I love too is that uh, it was like a process of elimination here because um, there comes a point where you're telling somebody you could get a severance package or you could pack your bags and come along, you know? And um, now I think I told him you could join me and do as I wish or in. By the time this conversation's over, there'll be a gentleman standing on your doorstep and he will hand you a severance package, which you definitely won't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I love the fact that all the individuals, because when you're doing something like a Zoom type thing for a movie, you've got to have characters that hold your attention. And I love the idea that this one did, you know, you've got the bickering couple, Yep. you know, <laughs> which were great, you know, who uh, had a troubled relationship and, and one, the fellow was had another apartment. You've got the guy that's struggling with drugs or trying to get over it, who seems to be relapsing pretty quickly. And, um, you got the guy that's got the like the blow up doll and this <laughs> that's like yeah. yeah like don't do that well there's a camera there <laughs> you know and one of the you got one girl that seems to be getting worse with the covid thing she just keeps getting sicker but she's brown nosing and then you have this girl that seems to be very very um free spirited Everybody thinks she doesn't know what she's doing. And when in reality, she's the one that's got er, pretty much got her crap together, you know? She's got everybody's number. Yeah, she knows exactly what she's doing, but she doesn't come across that way. So I love the, the, the dynamic here, and it held my attention nicely. Um, did you ever work with these cast members before? No. With any of them. Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, they're all new. They're new to me too. Um, except for Noelle Berger, who I've uh I've had a, uh did a few projects with. But um yeah, this this was great. Now Electric Man, talk about uh this film. I don't know a lot about it. Um, except what I did in it and uh, the, the uh, concept of it is basically a, a guy who gets an incredible electric shock, mm -hmm. changes his whole life and being, mm -hmm. but virtually becomes the electric man. Um, and it's what he goes through trying to figure it out and get away from it because he's pursued by everybody. Everybody wants him because if he sort of, puts his hands on certain things he can cause all kinds of problems um i actually without giving it away play mm -hmm. father but um his father isn't there uh-huh so it's kind of interesting my whole you don't work it out until the end of, of the whole bit with me and him you suddenly realize oh my god and it's it's a, a kind of a, a fun reveal which is what I like about uh, the film. I, you know, the same with with uh, social distance. I love the fact that I was the one stirring the pot. I knew everybody's foibles, feebles, feebles, their <laughs> problems, what they did, what they didn't do, what they wanted, what they didn't want. I knew every one of them. And I just stirred the pot. I just mixed it in the direction I wanted it to go. And I slowly eradicated the chaff from the corn and it was just that simple with the character he was the the, the ringmaster who was getting rid and, and unfortunately in um in the electric man it's it's just i i play his father which is a a, a really interesting role and a wonderful part to have played but um you know i had fun and I think if I can ever get to see the film, I think it will be wonderful. Everybody keeps saying it's great. <laughs> you haven't got to see it yet. 
but I will. Eventually. Well, you know, yeah. Well, there's things in social distance, little things that you do that really add. Like um, you get a shot, for example, uh, when somebody's talking to you and you're flipping through some folder or whatever, you know, or the scene where you're, um, what is it, you're eating cherries or something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, was that improvised on your part? It was virtually, I said to Brian, um, I did not want to be sitting like I am now with you, mm -hmm. um, the, the camera, because to me that seemed not real. I mean, he would be doing that. He would be wandering, doing things with his back to the camera, talking, um, wandering outside to get a cup of coffee and coming back and all the things that are natural. This guy's very arrogant. I mean, come on, he controls this whole bloody conglomerate. And there's something he's doing in Antarctica that we don't know, but it is really big. So he's not a dummy and he's not someone who's going to sit quietly in front of a camera because I think as he says he's handing it all I hand it all over to the girl and I say however I will be watching and I can come on at any time can't I and that's the yeah, end that's, and it's like everybody goes oh fuck it's like you know that kind of that's who he is he's the that, that presence that's always there that you may not see but you will feel if you do the wrong thing. And I think that's what's so great about him is that you never know what he's going to do. And, you know, the playing with the tomatoes, I, I love cherry tomatoes. So I just said to Brian, I'm going to come in with a plate of cherry tomatoes and eat them and crunch them right in front of when I'm as, as a, uh, a, a, a full stop to what I'm saying, you know, like if I'm saying something to him and when I end the sentence, I just crunch on a cherry tomato. And it just makes the character who he is, gives him another, I can't stand playing paper cardboard characters. Oh, I think it added to you, you know, I noticed stuff like that. I have to have three dimensions. I have to find little things that I can do with the character to make him more real or more, um, you know, more, around it i just i find little things my i work with a lovely lovely lady um lana who um is a director over in cincinnati mm -hmm. and uh, i've done three or four films with her and she always says when i'm on the set now we're going to burnify everything because <laughs> i stamp on what i'm doing you know i i can't do it plain i have to find something about the character that's intriguing and so i do every time i play a character and she loves it she works with me a lot she just actually she just sent me an email about a project i'm doing with her here in california so mm -hmm. it'll be i think my fourth or fifth film with her that's fantastic so, you know it's just i guess in my uh, oh my golden years, as they say, um, <laughs> as I've grown up, I've grown into what I do for a living. Um, as a good friend of mine says that uh, finally I got over being a juvenile twit and actually started to be a, an adult actor. Uh, <laughs> which is probably true, by the way. Uh, <laughs> now I, I really invest a lot into anything I do, no matter how big it is. If it's two lines, I invest a lot into it to make it work. Um, and that's the enjoyment I get out of it now is, is being able to do that. You know, I don't have to sort of accept mediocrity. I can actually um, hope to uh, make it better than what it is written on the page. Mm -hmm. that, that's, I think that's, that's a, a point that we get um, if we can, you know, you can stagnate. Don't get me wrong. This is me. It's not everybody. Um, you can stagnate and just go along the way you think is the safest route to take. But I like to put one foot in the concrete just to see if it's hard, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. I did this. To simply push the envelope because um, I like to see where I can take a character, you know, and make him. Make him different, make him work, make him uh, interesting. I just finished a film called Root, um, which is a wonderful, wonderful movie where I have to do an exorcism and I 
finally get slaughtered by the devil. Um, but I, I enjoyed it in the fact <laughs> that we played with so many interesting, I got to play Elvis Presley. That's how, how far <laughs> we actually went way out there, um, which was fun. I mean, that's what made it work. He's a guy and this is what he does for a living. He, he officiates weddings in Las Vegas as Elvis Presley. And um, his best friend is like, seriously, <laughs> you ever going to give up the childish crap and become real? He's like, no. <laughs> so it was just, I got to do something that I thought was fun, just playing Elvis Presley. And I'm just finishing at the moment a, a kid's movie called uh, Nerd. Uh, <laughs> A lot of kids' movies, believe it or not. I think somebody out there's warped that they're putting me in kid movies. Mm. <laughs> I'm just finishing off one called Nerd, which is really, really fun about um, uh, an invasion from outer space that never actually happens. So uh, it's called, oh, sorry, it's called Geek. My uh, other half just yelled at me and said, it's not Nerd, you dumbass, it's Geek. <laughs> It's geek. I just, well, nerd geek, you know, same thing. Come on, let's be serious here. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's wonderful. And um, I did another one a year or so, two years ago called Sally Floss, which is a, um, a children's book. There's like five or six of them, I believe. Mm -hmm. and I did, uh, one film called uh, The Case of the Missing Earring. Um, and I play her grandfather which is kind of fun so i'm being put into all these kids movies and i'm having a ball I and mean, i i cannot complain about what i get to do i get to do the most wonderful things with the most wonderful people and i enjoy it and i guess that's that's the main thing i enjoy what i do love the people i work with and i tend to get some really interesting things to do so hey that's me so are you a geek or a nerd? <laughs> I, I kind of sit on the outside of that. I'm a dumb shit. Uh, <laughs> so did you sing any Elvis songs? No, I actually had a very bad Southern accent for him. <laughs> and kept going. Seriously, he sounds like a drunk Southerner. Um, <laughs> But it, it was fun. It was just actually the costume and everything and my hair the way it is. I had the Elvis glasses on and we were doing a rehearsal. And this lady in the middle of this very small town, uh, which is where we were shooting. And the lady pulled up. She got out of the car and she walked this right through the middle of what we're shooting, like the rehearsal. Fortunately, we weren't shooting a take. We're just doing camera stuff through the. And she walks across to me and she goes, "Are they doing an Elvis show? You look so much like Elvis Presley. Oh my God!" And I'm like, oh, "Ma'am, we're shooting a movie, and uh, you know, you're right in the middle of the frame. Um, <laughs> so it must have worked, I guess." <laughs> So I'm going to assume that there's going to be a sequel to Social Distance, huh? I don't know if there's going to be a sequel, but I am assuming there could be, yes. Because we don't know what happened and Brian won't tell me. Brian won't tell you. Well, you got to strong arm him like uh, Wes would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Applied, he just laughs at me. So, you know, doesn't work well with him, but... Um, you never know. I mean, I think once he gets everything done and uh, finds out where he is, there may be. Yeah, I would hope so. Let me put it that way. I hope there is a sequel because I think the film deserves it. Yes. Yes. Well, you got a like a, you, you uh, mentioned a few of them, but on your IMDb, you got a ton of stuff. that's either pre-production, filming or post-production. <laughs> <laughs> Five films. So uh, you you keep yourself constantly busy. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people out there dumb enough to hire me. So you know what the hell. Um, no, I just a lot of the work I get is repeat work with people I've worked with. Mm -hmm. uh, with <laughs> the most, excuse me, the most enjoyable part of it. 
that they they um, appreciate what I do enough to want me in other projects they're doing. Like Lana has me in everything she's doing. She just loves working with me, which is mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful director. I mean, oh my God, she is so good. And um, the the film she does are wonderful, and I get to play these wonderful characters, which stretch my limits as an actor and make me actually wake up to what I really am. Um, and I just love that. And she, you know, as I said, I just got a, an email from her uh, telling me about the next project we're doing. And by the way, she never asks me. She just tells me that we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like to be in this film. There's, we're doing this film and you're playing this role. Uh, and it's like, uh, okay, thank you. Um, but uh, you know, most of what I get is people that I've worked with and people that um, I know in the business, which I think is wonderful. It um, just, it, it helps. I did a little thing called, uh, for a friend of mine, uh, called Fear of the Woods. It's a uh, 15 minute, it was originally done as a, a concept for a film called mm -hmm. Fear of the Woods. Um, and uh, it uh, it turned out so well. We shot it over in in uh, Sweden in uh, at Christmas time two years ago, and it turned out so well when they cut it, edited it, did all the special effects, put the music to it, that it's now going to be the first fifteen minutes of the major film. And we did it just purely and simply to show that it could be done because there's a a, a ten foot bear in it rather large animal that uh, tends to want to mold people. Um, so they had to show them that they could do it with visual and um, computer and uh, animatronics, whatever, to make it work and make it look real. And it does. I mean, it looks incredibly realistic. So I did that. And uh, that was for a director I worked with in a Steven Seagal movie. Um, so he just loves working with me and he uh, wants me to do that. So uh, even though my part is now finished, I end up very dead by the end of the 15 minutes. It is a crucial character that sort of makes the story uh, go where it's got to go. And it's, it's things like that. I got a group in Australia, uh, Travis. Travis, I love. Um, I've done three films with Travis. He has two more that he's doing which he wants me to do it's it's and that's how it goes you know i get to work with these amazing people and then they just want to keep working with me so <laughs> doing something right huh yep well you know what it was a pleasure meeting you at horror rama i mean chris alexander uh, had brought you into that and um tell him to bring me back the little twerp you know what? I'm trying to get his ass on this podcast. He said way back then. He gave me his email address. I've had his girlfriend, uh, Allie Chapel, on here. Haven't had him on here yet. I've had Louis Therese on here twice. So uh, I just ordered two of his films on Blu-ray from his site. And he sent, finally sends me an email thanking me for my support. If there's anything he can do, I'm like, yeah, get your ass on this podcast. <laughs> that's something you could do <laughs> free publicity yeah but yeah did uh i'm taking it your uh experience at horror rama was fun oh yeah i had a ball i had a ball that was my first and i'm somebody who's gotten homesick just going to moncton and saint john which are just a couple hours away <clears throat> so for me to go to toronto that was something I did, could not imagine I'd want to do again, and, and I did. I've done it every year since. I always see Lisa when I go down there, mm -hmm. and uh, yep, and uh, she's become a dear friend, and uh, and you get to work with her in a, in a film as well. So, uh, yep, she shot a couple of films in Ontario over uh, uh, over this year, I think. So I'm hoping to get her back on here, but I'm going to see her when I go down there this fall. But um, Say hello for me, please. Oh, I absolutely will. But, you know, 
social distance, the whole background about it is the whole COVID-19 thing. Now, we got to yep. jump on it here. You know, we haven't had very many deaths. I am fully vaccinated. But um, but nonetheless, how have you been coping with the whole pandemic? Um, a good, uh, it didn't have- Affect us that much until a couple of close relatives, uh, one close relative and a couple of close friends passed away from it, which kind of made us all go, whoa. Um, but I'm vaccinated um, and Grace is vaccinated and I think our dogs are vaccinated. We've got everybody uh, vaccinated so that we uh, stay safe. But you know, I think the two safest places to be in this pandemic are in aeroplanes and on film sets because they are so strict on film sets. You know, they, they, you have to have a uh, test before you come onto the set and you have to have one every three days while you're on the set. You know, that's, that's much safer than we are in real life. Um, just, you know, and, and that's, the environment, people, because people say to me, why are you filming? My God, you know, there's a bit, because they're really, really careful with what they do and very careful about uh, filming in these conditions, which is good. And it's changed the industry a lot. So many things have changed because of it for the good, uh, which I think is great. You know, crews have become smaller, which is good. We, you know, we used to have huge crews for not a lot of good reasons. And um, so now we're, we're kind of learning how to minimalize everything, get things you know, done properly, quickly, you know, not take seven months to do a film you could shoot in, in two months, you know, that kind of thing. It's all helping the industry. It's, it's helping the people involved in the industry. So uh, I'm, I'm happy about that, but also it's incredibly safe. You don't hear about a lot of people on film sets getting COVID which is the, the good thing. And, uh, you know, same thing when you're traveling on a plane. Um, it's very safe there because they, they do so many things to make sure that you're safe. They can't afford to have anybody catch COVID in an airplane or that makes it really difficult for that airline to fly. So, you know, um, but otherwise, Everything's pretty much, I live in California. Everything's pretty much back to jack shit normal here. You can't get out of my driveway anymore. You go down the beach any day when it's warm and there's a million people. It's like, oh, good. We're back. We're back. Well, it's funny uh, because I've been going back to the movie theater since uh, (laughs) July 2020. So, (laughs) so. um, Yep, I haven't been near a movie theater. It doesn't really interest me. No, but. I got double vaccinated. It didn't affect me any other than a sore arm. It didn't affect me any, but, um, but, uh, yeah, the, the day I got my second vaccination was the day I had to get my new car. <laughs> I, yeah. I Two good things in the same day. Yeah. So I couldn't, I, I could not afford to, uh, be sick that day, but luckily I, waltz through it now my supervisor on the other hand she was out a few days so i get to rib her about it but <laughs> like guess who showed up for work <laughs> but but um nonetheless i get people tell me you sure you want to go to toronto they said what about the delta variant and i'm like you know what i can't live in fear and I got my two vaccinations. It's just, you know, and my big thing about going, I asked Lisa if she was fine with meeting up with me there, because if she wasn't fine with it, then I probably wouldn't have gone because um, I save all my free movies and I've got 20 plus of them on my uh, Cineplex scene card. I always save them when I visit, visit and hang out with Lisa down there. I told her to pick movies and I got lots of free ones. So if she wasn't up for it, then I probably would know, but she said she's down with it. And so I'm like, good. It's been two years, you know, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to do that convention and see your fellow uh, motorcyclist and crime, Michael Berriman down there. And (laughs) Michael say hello to Michael, my most favorite person. Your most favorite. Yeah. Love Michael. I thought Lisa was your favorite. Now, Lisa's female. 
Yeah. <laughs> Last time I looked, I don't think Michael Berryman was. But hey, what do I know? <laughs> but uh, no, but you have a lot of projects on the go. And um, and um, and I was happy to hear you promote them on here. You know, I really enjoyed this movie, so I'm glad I invested in it. But uh, you do have, um, would you say, two conventions coming up? Uh, yep. I'll be, in, I'll be in um, doing the uh, 30th of October in uh, New York or wherever it is. Where is it? Newark. In Newark. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got one coming up uh, in two weeks uh, up uh, where the Clintons live <laughs> or did live. Um, good lord see do too many films your brain fries well you know what rodney dangerfield once said the sign of you getting old is that when people talk about you in front of you so i'm just talking to you so you're fine <laughs> oh is that it oh damn it <laughs> well do you got i know you got charities you're involved with do you want to plug your charities uh, yeah, I'm very involved with um, Apex Protection. Uh, that is uh, rescues wolves and wolf dogs. And uh, we have uh, 12, probably 12 at the moment on, on the property. And then there's another um, rescue that we're involved with, which we originally were on the board of directors for. And they have around 38 uh, wolves and wolf dogs that they've rescued. And especially now because um the government won't put them back on the um endangered list so they're being slaughtered in basically every state at the moment so pretty soon we won't have any and that's going to be interesting because they tend to keep the ecology the way it should be so i don't know what we're going to do when they're gone oh gee people are so careless when it comes to uh comes to animals yep yep so uh, you get a web page that you want to like where people can find you? Uh, yeah, you can just go to um, VG Wells or Vernon G Wells, either one, um, and you can find me. Um, I'm practically on everything, I believe. I have a, a web guide that does all that because being um, a total non-nerd, I have no idea which buttons to push. Um, and I generally end up putting it on someone else's page. Uh, so I have him doing that. Michael does all that for me. But I'm on, you know, Twitter and everything. I'm on everything. Um, I'm not hard to find if you want me. Just ask the police. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a joke. Um, but no, I'm, I'm uh, pretty easy to find. So, you know, VG Wells or Vernon G. Wells, either one of those will get me on uh, the web. Well, you know, um, <laughs> we found you and Chris Alexander found you and I was happy to meet you and uh, have you come on here today and uh, celebrate the uh, 40th anniversary of of uh, this haircut. <laughs> yeah, this, this trended uh, for a while there. There were people going around with this. You started something. There still is people going around looking like that. That's what's scary. <laughs> you you don't want somebody to come, want your plumber to come looking like that? <laughs> uh, preferably not. No. <laughs> Anything else you want to plug on here before we close off? Uh, no. That's you know just the films I've got coming up. If you go to um, IMDb, you can see exactly what I've got coming up. Uh, there's quite a there's I think there's five films coming out. Um, Kill Giggles is one of my good fun films that I've done, and uh, Jack Be Nimble I believe is coming out in a couple of months. It's in final post, and uh, there's another one that just came out. Um, I believe we'll be out next couple of weeks um, on social platforms so you can download it or zoom it or whatever the heck you do these days. Um, 
and uh, there's, you know, I, I never really know what projects are coming out. Nobody tells me anymore. Remember when they would write to you and say, <laughs> hey, your film's coming out next week, and you'd be all excited. Now nobody cares. Somebody will say to me, hey, did you know that such and such movie's out that you did? It's like, what? Oh, when did that come out? <laughs> oh, great. Would you say you have a project called Kill Giggles? Kill Giggles. Yep. Kill the Clown. Oh, my goodness. It's fun. I actually, can't... actually fun. Yeah, I don't see it mm -hmm. on here unless I'm missing it somewhere. Well, there's Barry. Is Barry on there? Um, oh, boy. That's like a bear with an R-Y on it, Barry. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> No, I'm not seeing that. But then again, I could be missing it. I'm just kind of scro scrolling here. So <laughs> that's two that are in there that have uh, Barry's out, and the Kill Giggles will be coming out. Um, oh, I see Barry. Okay, that's out. That just came out. That's a fun movie too. <laughs> and so uh, Kill Giggles is all done. Oh, I see Kill Giggles. Okay, I was looking at the. Uh, pre-production and post-production and all that oh gee you work with felissa rose and judith o'day in that yep i've interviewed judith o'day uh-huh yeah and felissa's supposed to be a frightmare yeah felissa's everywhere felissa's like you working in everything i've never had her on here yet but uh sandy johnson of the original halloween put me in touch with her so uh and she said she'd do my show she seems i've heard all good things about her but i'm wondering when i would get i'm surprised i got you on here with your schedule being what it is kill giggles yeah <laughs> oh gee you cut out uh, um, uh okay we uh <laughs> yeah we got cut off there for a minute oh we had a bit of a heck up there yeah the, my my doctor rang in the middle of it oh did he <laughs> yeah so I, I managed to tell them i couldn't hear them they, they i think they could hear me i told them i'd bring them back when i finish okay well yeah you probably need some doctors after playing this guy. <laughs> Different kind of doctors. <laughs> Medical kind. <laughs> well, uh, any any last things you want to mention before we close off? Uh, no, I just uh, virtually all I want to mention is that I um, hope that everybody out there that's uh, a friend, a colleague, or, or somebody who likes what I do, mm -hmm. uh, self safe and uh is very aware that this COVID is serious and deadly and it will kill you and it doesn't care so, no yeah. it doesn't no and as we all look after ourselves and everyone around us we'll be okay but you know if we don't we're all in deep and uh so i just wish that everybody is blessed with being able to be safe including yourself greg Oh, yeah. And um, that we go on and that uh, we're still here in the years to come. So who works harder, you or Felissa? <laughs> you see, there's a difference. Felissa works, <laughs> I work better. <laughs> oh, look, looking forward to seeing her this fall. Well, before I let you go, would you mind doing a plug for my show? Sure. What would you like me to say? Just uh, state your name and say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. My name is Vernon Wells, and you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Absolutely. And again, one last time, 40th anniversary of the Road Warrior. 40 yeah, years ago, you had this cool haircut. You keep telling me that. <laughs>
Isn't George Miller trying to do another one of these? Isn't he going to re resurrect Wes so you can have the haircut again? Nope. But he's doing uh, the second one, uh, which is Furiosa. Um, they're casting it at the moment. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Wes should fight with Furiosa. Wes is dead. Well, look, they look how many times do they bring these horror movie characters back? Come on now. <laughs> Well, I think he'd have a hard time bringing Wes back. Uh, <laughs> if he rang tomorrow and asked me to do it, I'd be the first one over there to do it. So. There you go. There you go. Well, you know what? It was a pleasure and honor to have you on here again today. Thank you for uh, doing my show for a second time. And um, I'm happy to be uh, part of social distance. And like I said, you're the reason I come on board. So you made a, a wonderful impression on me when I met you at Horrorama. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I'll be involved in another project as soon as I get my finances. Everybody is reaching out to me about these projects. And and um, they got to realize I don't make money at my podcast. I make money as a cleaner. I'm an essential worker. <laughs> so I work. Yeah. So it's like um, my car and uh, CPAP machine kind of had to take the top priority. So, so um, anyway, I'm, I'm still trucking and still loving doing this and really, really glad I got to meet you in 2017. And I'll tell Chris Alexander to bring you back. Yeah, it's time to bring me back. I'd love to come. And please say hello to the lovely lady when you see her at the convention. And if uh, Chris doesn't bring you back, you got my permission to take the hat off his head so we can all see what's underneath there. <laughs> He's always wearing the hat. <laughs> well, God bless you, uh, Vernon. Thank you so much for coming on here today. Thank you for having me, Greg. Keep safe and... Uh, Keep doing those projects. I'll, I'll be probably seeing you in something very, very soon. Thank you, sir. And hopefully you will. Absolutely. Take care, man. Bye, bye. Bye-bye.